hello hello if you are here right now it means that you are about to embark with me on the first episode of this season of story time the request line i'm super super excited about this you'll kind of get this as you step in but the idea is that we are immersing ourselves in grown folks music which is the radio station slash studio slash music store in the height. Now, Grown Folks Music or GFM has a segment where people can call in and make their request on the request line. We're gonna have people calling in to make the request and then we'll have a story that is inspired by whatever music they've requested. For obvious copyright reasons, I cannot use the music that they're actually requesting. These are all going to be short and a, a resolution, eh, you know, may or may not happen. What we're looking, what we're getting into here is vignettes of these different people's stories. Just a quick peek into their lives as they're navigating whatever it is that they're going through. Now, I'm done for now with my little housekeeping spiel. Holla. Take it away, feeling too good to me. Chilling all day, all in your space is where I want to be. Hey, Grown Folks Music listeners, welcome back to the show. Now that we're done paying some bills, we can get right back to the request line. I'm picking up a new caller in three, two. Hey, what's up? You're on the line with Leah. Tell me where you're calling from. I'm calling from right here in the Heights. Grant, is that you? Damn, you just immediately bust me out on air like that. Uh-uh. You know Grown Folks Music is on WAWG Satellite now. We worldwide, baby. You can't be playing on the station phone. I'm not playing. I have a request. You have a request. And a dedication, too. Oh, word. Okay. Okay. Let's hear it. I want you to play that uh, Eric Bellinger. Cuffin' Season. Oh. Okay. And uh, what lucky listener are we dedicating that to? You. It's dedicated to you. All that I crave when you're away, nights are sleepless. Do we need space? Yeah, maybe you're brave. Boy, you're my weakness. Leah. Even we take the love that we make. It's my favorite drug. Too caught up in your love. I wasn't supposed to get a happily ever after, you know? That's what everybody said. What they whispered about me, even now. Even still. Years after the fact, the people I'd hurt, they long moved on to the point that we were for real loved ones now. People I'd do anything for. I didn't make any excuses, though. My behavior had been ugly. So ugly. But you know what they say about hurt people, right? And that's not an excuse. It's a reason. There's a difference. Roman and Simone, they understood my reasons. My reasons made room for amends and forgiveness and then real friendship, family, and I was so grateful. There was never a moment when I was able to drop my little boy, no blood relation to them at all, at their house that I didn't feel it. Never a moment when I went to get Zara and had my offer to take all the kids, their kids, accepted that I didn't feel it. Trust was a blessing, a blessing some folks in this neighborhood didn't think I deserved. And not like friends, you know. If Viv or Charlie, somebody like that, thought I was a messy bitch just waiting for the right moment to show my true self again, I would get that. I would hate it, but I would get it because they had a front row seat to the pain I caused. Being a messy bitch. But no, they were good. We weren't best besties or anything like that, but we were a couple notches above friendly. Viv would call whenever she got cool exotic chocolates I might like in the shop. Charlie would always save me a corner piece of her mac and cheese on my regular Tuesday and Thursday drop-in for lunch, stuff like that. I was cool with them. It was the people who didn't have anything to do with it, who side-eyed me and Roman talking outside Zara's taekwondo class or when I dared to be an urban grind. Like we didn't have a whole child together who we were trying to healthily co-parent. Or hell, like I hadn't been a main source of support while he was making Urban Grind what it was. It was all weird and annoying and affected me more than it should. To the point that I started wondering if maybe I was wrong. Maybe I was crazy. Maybe they weren't really as cool as they claimed they were. 
So I pulled back some. All the stuff with the kids remained intact because keeping their schedules all together was paramount. For example, Simone was Zara's go-to parent for tutoring days since Roman and I both had late days at work. On Simone and Roman's early days, it was my day off, so I was responsible for all the kids from the wee hours of the morning until it was time to get them off to school. It worked, and I wasn't about to let my insecurities mess that up. I just stepped away from being in the mix so much. No, I wasn't going to be at open mic night, but have fun. No, dinner smells amazing, but I really can't stay. I'm sorry. Oh, man, massages would be great, but I, um, I've um, i got this rash. Simone noticed it pretty quickly, confronted me about it, laughed when I fessed up. Uh, girl, I would be crazy not to be mindful of anybody around my husband and kids, she admitted. But I trust him. And because I've been able to get to know you and watch you grow into your real self instead of what that situation made you, I trust you. Ain't nobody worried about what them stranger danger people are saying. She was right. I was tripping. But it stayed at the back of my mind. Grow into your real self instead of what that situation made you. That was how she put it, and that was accurate. I hadn't always been that messy bitch and didn't want to be that either, especially when, deep down at the root, it wasn't really about being a messy bitch as much as it was about being a scared one. Again, not excuses. Nothing about my behavior was cool or okay, but I was willing to bet that faced with losing their only real safe space, maybe those people judging me wouldn't have done the exact same things, but maybe they would have done worse, or maybe they wouldn't have done anything as bad. But when we're cornered, we all do unexpected things. I loved Simone for Roman from Jump. She had her own business. She was smart, beautiful, just a good look for him. When she first found out about our living arrangement, how I lost my job, needed a place to stay, she was not having it. I encouraged them to work it out, though. Tried my best to make it clear there was no funny business with me and him, all that. I was rooting for them. And then things changed with my boyfriend, Justin. We were cool before, taking it at a normal pace, and then things suddenly got different. Gifts and attention and praise and just crazy intensity. Roman and Simone were getting closer. He wasn't really kicking it with me anymore like he had been. And I was losing my place with the father of my child, my friend. Struggling to find a new place I could afford on a temporary job that didn't pay enough. Watching him, and it seemed like everybody else, succeed in their careers and in love and just life in general. So I leaned into that toxic relationship with Justin just to say I had something. And at the same time, I was also pushing Roman away. Picking fights, not because I wanted to fight, though. I was just flailing. Roman had always been that solid ground, and once he started pulling away from that role, rightfully, I was terrified. And I let that terror convince me that Simone was a problem. The problem. If it wasn't for her, my home life wouldn't be changing, and I wouldn't need to lean into this thing with Justin, because things with Roman would just be the same as they were before. We'd been friends and then turn to each other for comfort in grieving another friend. That's what took us to sex. And then trying to be together like an actual couple, which didn't work. It did create a child, though, and we were... We were cool enough. When I lost my job and lost my place, though, and couldn't go to my parents, though they offered for Zara to come, of course, Roman had been the rescuer. He invited me to come and get back on my feet. And because of that proximity, we weren't just co-parents. We were friends again. Almost like a little family, but platonic. 
I didn't even want more than that, which is why I really liked this thing with Simone at first. I was happy for him. And then it hit me that everything would be changing again because of her. If she weren't in the picture, I wouldn't need a new place. I wouldn't feel so pressured to maybe get a second job to afford that new place. And I wouldn't be trying to convince myself that it wasn't that big of a deal when Justin would snatch me by my arm sometimes when he got mad. Or that one time by the neck. But he swore he was sorry. Couples fought sometimes. It wasn't worth overreacting. And I just made him so mad. That was all the kind of shit I told myself about the situation. But I knew better. I knew better, but it was like I couldn't make a good decision to save my damn life. Everything was so chaotic and wrong and constantly shifting, and it just made me so angry. My little girl was the only person getting any kind of goodness out of me at that time. And Justin, of course, because I was scared to do otherwise. Again, I was just flailing hurting whoever I could land a hit on. Ugly comments about Simone's miscarriage, picking fights, causing disruption. And then I pushed it too far, got drunk, and went even further than I cared, actually, to go. Tried to sleep with Roman. I'd already been tap dancing on the line, and that right there, that was the moment I torpedoed it. It was easy to say yes when Justin proposed. He was scary, but in my tumultuous state, at least he was solid. At least I'd have someone, right? And with everything I'd done to Roman and Simone, with the way I disappointed my parents in the first place by getting pregnant with Zara so young and unmarried and losing my job and not being able to find anything and all the other long line of mistakes and bad decisions and just generally being a mess, he was what I deserved. This was penance. Every time he raised a hand, every threat, every night spent in terror, that was what I deserved. I really believed that for a while, even after he was killed in the line of duty. And I sat at his funeral with relieved tears streaming down my face and all his buddies thought I was just so heartbroken. When actually I was wrecked with guilt for being glad he was gone. He'd never put his hands on our son, never even looked his R wrong. He reserved all his abuse for me, but always worried, always wondered, would he try it with them? And if he did, what then? Luckily, it never happened. That didn't kill the guilt, though. And it didn't kill the intensity of loneliness that came after, but I deserve that, too, you know? I'd ask Simone's forgiveness long before that, knowing we'd be in each other's lives and things between us had been fine. Everybody was cordial. We made the schedules work, all that. I didn't expect her support after Justin died. She didn't know me that, but she gave it anyway, trying to give me a break from parenting duties so I could grieve, wanting to come over and cook, clean, take care of the baby, just being a good person. It was sweet and... I was so grateful, but I wasn't grieving. She looked at me like I was crazy when I told her that, but I was so glad to not have that dark cloud over me anymore that I was practically bubbly. Then I told her what I'd never told a soul. I just wore the right clothes, perfected the makeup to never let it show. Telling it was like reliving it almost, and... I end up pouring out all the tears I'd refuse to let myself cry over all the time I was convincing myself that what was happening was what I deserved for what I'd done to her. She told me that was the stupidest shit she'd ever heard. And then she cried with me. Somehow, it was still hard to let it all go, though. It was so deeply internalized that for years, even after that, I... Turned down advances, turned down drinks, turned down dates, turned down offers from friends to hook me up because while I could agree that I deserve to live in terror and have a man kick my ass was a pretty intensely wrong mindset, that was about as far as I could go. A happily ever after, for me, girl, no. It didn't matter what I was going through. 
I tried to ruin someone else's. I didn't get to have that. Simone said that was stupid too, but she was going to have to live with it because I wasn't. Hey, Leah. Shit. The sound of a familiar voice behind me startled me so bad that I nearly dropped the two full tote bag of apples I was carrying in one hand. I've been off in space, just loading them up. I swallowed hard, then slowly turned, weighed down by the insane amount of apples outpiled in this bag, embarrassed as hell. Grants, hey, how are you? I asked, awkwardly accepting the hug he'd offered. We'd known each other at least a decade, so there was nothing weird about him hugging me, but still, I really wanted to melt into the floor. I'm good. You about to uh, donate to the summer camp? He asked, peering at my bag, and I was quick to nod. Yes, perfect excuse. Thank you. Oh, that's excellent. Thank you. He grinned and, wow, this man is fine. Not that it was new information. He'd been fine the whole time I'd known him with the firefighter wide shoulders and caramel skin and green eyes and that jawline and that smile and, hey, you want to uh use my basket? He offered already sliding the back off my arm where the weight of it had left a dark welt, reminiscent of... That's from the bag, right? Yes, I nodded. I did a heart swallow, trying to calm my racing heart before I dared meet his gaze. Well before I told anyone about Justin, Grant knew. He knew because he was a trained paramedic too and had been one of the people who responded to the distress call on that particularly awful night. Justin had just left me there, and I was too broken emotionally to move. Our son was screaming, and I guess a neighbor called 911, and I don't know. It was a blur. One I tried to push to the far recesses of my mind, but yeah. Grant saw and asked me to press charges. His twin was a detective and could help, and a bunch of stuff that I knew was useless. He was sincere, but Justin was a cop, and nothing but his death had saved me. Could have saved me. Grant came to the funeral, comforted me, and then, years later, he asked me out, and I declined. Simone said I was crazy and asked if I was feeling okay, uh, maybe, and yes, I felt fine. I was just not there. Grant was, though. Not too much and never in a creepy way, just present. He paid for my coffee every once in a while if he caught me at Urban Grind, talked to me after soccer practice for JR. He was one of the coaches. Called the request line ever so often, and then, last week, he sent flowers to the station. Beautiful flowers that made me blush, but I still wasn't there. I didn't think. Standing in front of him now, though, in the middle of grown with a tree worth of apples in this basket, something deep in me wanted him to ask me again. For a long while now, I've been content with being alone, not punishing myself with loneliness, but really just accepting myself, all of that. But as of late, I caught myself wondering. And then, yeah, those flowers came and he just been on my mind. We talked about the neighborhood summer camp, who all was volunteering for what. We talked about the new realtor who would come in, the new businesses he was bringing to the Heights. We shopped for other things besides apples that they need to make lunches for the kids at, at camp. And then at the front counter, I ended up just paying for everything instead of splitting the orders. A donation from the radio station that I would split later with Vaughn. I helped Grant load the bags up in his truck and then he gave me another hug and moved to get in. Which, of course, he had places to go, food to deliver, and the flowers... It was just being nice. 
I mean, I turned him down. It wasn't like this man was hiding over me. Like, he didn't have better. Leah. I'd already turned to go to my own vehicle when he called my name, so I was halfway across the parking lot when I turned. Yeah? Uh, I know last time I asked you this, you weren't interested, but... Yes. Yes? His eyebrows shot up. What? I said, suddenly realizing what I'd done. I mean, um... I should probably let you ask a question first, huh? Nah, I'm taking my yes. You already said it. No take backs. Wait. Nope. I'll pick you up Friday at 8. How do you know I'm not working that night? Because I listen to your show on Thursdays and Saturdays. Friday is your night off. You're right. So, I'll see you at 8 on Friday then? Ugh. I was feeling nervous as hell about it, but... Yeah. Yeah. See you then. So, yeah, I started with Leah, who, if you remember from a crazy little thing called Love, was a villain. But as we see, there was something more, uh, something deeper going on with her at that time. And we see what the power of forgiveness and redemption can do. If you don't feel like she deserves it, that's your prerogative. You don't have to talk to me about it though. Um, <laughs> I do hope that you were able to enjoy it for what it was. Either way, um, I already have the next three episodes written. So, and they will follow different people. It won't be about Leah and Grant again. We're done with them. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I'll see you guys for more next Friday. Just can't stop thinking